Well, hello there. Today we will be spicing up our traditional sambana soup with repeat blocks that are the same but different. I go to a lot of shows and often at these shows I see places where you can go and buy quilt tops that are already pieced. And a lot of those quilt tops are really cute. Now this quilt top that I bought is um, of Sambonet Sioux and it is hand pieced which means and hand applique but um, I have to tell you it's not the very best work but it's so cute and I can make it just fantabulous by doing the quilting on it. The squares are not all squares some of them are misshaped the some of the piecing I've had to uh, work with because it's coming off so the applique you can see the stitches there's some stains on it there's places on it where you know of course they're not meeting exactly and you know I love that because it's a challenge for me to figure out how to quilt that to make it look fantastic so I hope that the ideas that I show you today will encourage you to do some of these quilts how old this quilt is I'm not exactly sure I know the fabrics are old it looks like many of them were from old dresses and things like that which makes it even more endearing to me and I'm going to be giving it to my granddaughter when I'm finished so I um, want to show you what I did to quilt that and I first of all decided I would do circles around these sunbonnet sous and that would complete some of the sashing ideas for me but um, I used two different um, machines to do those circles. I wanted to use my computerized machine and some of you have a computerized machine so this will work for you and so I want to show you how I did that on the on the computerized machine as well as the Greek key. I decided to put a Greek key over these um, corner sets in the sashings because they were so odd shaped none of them are square and by putting this Greek key over it really um, brings your eye and makes you focus on it but does not focus on the piecing that isn't quite as perfect as some piecing especially our piecing today so let's take a look at how I quilted that on my computerized machine and then I'll show you how I can do it on my traditional machine I just bring it to the center which I found on the square and push OK moves into position and takes a stitch and then I just push go. And our circle is finished. Now we're ready to place a Greek key in the square. For the Greek key, I just need to click around the box. I'm going to do a quick pause and cut my thread. Oh, 
all done. Didn't that circle turn out neat on the computer and the Greek key? I'm very pleased with that. I also did the larger circle um, on this uh, square because my circle maker and my workstation won't do a 15 inch circle. So I did that one on the computerized. There's an advantage for that. And also I want to mention some of you don't have as big of a throat on your machine. So you may need to divide um, your circles, maybe even draw them on and then roll, do part of it and then roll. But I'm lucky I have a 30 inch machine. To begin with, I stabilized this quilt by going around each and every square and just went all the way through the quilt before I placed my circles on it. Then, once the circles are placed, I come back and I find the center of each of these sunbonnet sous. And believe me, those were all over the place. Some of them are on the bonnet, some of them are on the body of the sunbonnet sous. So that was an interesting experience. But finding the center of that particular block was real important. Then I can bring my machine over, set my needle down there, and then I'll go around it on the back using my circle maker. Okay, I have the center that I placed my needle over the center that I marked, and then I found the center back here and placed my circle maker and my workstation. And so now I can come over and go into the circle that I need. And I just bring up my thread and hold it behind and then stitch around. And I'll just over stitch when I get to the place where I started. And then from the back, I will raise that and skip down another inch and go around there. How wonderful that is. Easy. Okay, now I'm going to do the Greek key over this square and it's uh, this little four patch. You can see that it's not not pieced very well, but uh, I will start in the middle, and this is, of course, doing it all by hand. And you could use channel locks if you have channel locks, but I think if you just move your, just like this, and let me get rid of this um, little thread so that I don't have to worry about that again. There we go. You see, I'm just using, oh, um, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, and if I just um, hold the machine carefully and just move horizontally, vertically, like this. It's pretty darn easy to do and it's really fun. And just pause in the corner. Now if you don't have regulated stitch, make sure that you um, don't pause too long in the corner. Just continue all the way out. And this divides those little squares actually into triangles. So the eye is distracted by those triangles and doesn't look at the squareness of it. And while I'm doing this, I will stop now and I'm doing some little feathers here, a large one in the center. Come back over here and do the same thing. And so I'm filling in these other areas. so easily. And this really goes with this sunbonnet sue because these little uh, feathers almost look like little flowers. So cute. So that whole area is finished now. Next, I needed to stitch around each of the sunbonnet sous, and I wanted to do this in a very continuous manner. And I have a little arm there, and so I want to make sure that I get that arm stitched around. So I found that if I started right here, where the bonnet meets with the front, and I'm going to put my applique helper on like this, 
and then I'll just come down the bonnet like this, following the bonnet, and then just a stitch or two over to the arm, and then I can go all the way around that arm. And I'm using 14 stitches to the inch. I always have people that ask me that, that I would use at least 12. Back up the bonnet, and now I'm coming down the side of the dress. My left hand just helps me with this. Now around the foot, I went around the dress first, and then back around the foot, and then I just went across that dress again. It's not going to be a problem to have two lines of stitching there. So I didn't have to start and stop again. Getting up here, now I can go around the bonnet, and I will just get that little thread out of the way right now and cut that. I don't have to deal with that. And around the bonnet like this. And um, as I come back down to here, I am going to tell you that we're doing five different, since there's five blocks across and six blocks down, I decided to do across all five doing a different design. Now, this first design that I'm going to do is going to be in, um, I'm doing it in constant, and I'm doing lines like this, and then I do a little bit of a meandering. And I'll do lines like this again, just to kind of break up the stipple a little bit. And you see, I just came right out from where I was. So all of this is very continuous. Just back and forth like that. I don't want to do really heavy quilting on this, so um, I wanted to come up with some designs that were different, but would look really terrific. And the other idea I had was to do them, alternate them, so that when I'm finished, they will all be in a diagonal, and I'll show you what I mean. There we go, and I'll just end on that line right there. And that finished that block for me, except for the bonnet, which we're going to do in the next episode. Let's take a look at this. You can see on the first row, I did this design here. And so on the second row, I'm doing it here. On the third row, I did it there. This design I'm doing, I'm starting at the bottom. And I'm still in a constant mode. Um, but you could do this in regulated. And I'm doing my feathers, so I just come up and follow the circle, over, follow the circle, kind of a teardrop shape. This is just a long arm feather, just coming out and over, just follow that feather up and over, like this. Now when I get to the top, I'm going to do kissing feathers. So I will bring the feather all the way over, right there, then follow the circle over, and then reverse the direction that I'm doing the feathers, but the feathers are all pointing up. So that just changed the direction for me. As I follow this down, I'm following the circle. And I am coming right out into the sashing because I want to have whatever design I'm doing filling in the entire circle. Coming around. And you could do this with any of the quilts that you have with repeating blocks. There we go. On this block, I decided to just put some circles in and just fill them in. And so I'm, I'm using my crosshatch circles because you can use them for crosshatching. You can also use them for circles. And you really have to hold that down as you get started there. I'm going to have to put my hand over here in front for a second. And then I'll move my finger, try to get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. These are tiny, so. There we go, and you see that made a circle. Isn't that amazing? And then I'm just going to put some pattern meandering inside this one. And what I did was try to move um, when I start and stop the circle in a different place so that those pattern meanderings um, are not all horizontal or vertical, but they're all different. This one is a little bit bigger. Finger there. 
come around like that. And I think I can do more of a diagonal patterning in here. You can see I've also put little pebbles in them. Or you could even um, just come back the other direction and make it kind of an informal cross-hatching look. Like that. And again, I'll use the little one. And just do another one down here. You could even do a partial one, um, having it come off somewhere. Just have a half of one. They're easy to go around. So, those were very fun and kind of a, a very different look. In this square, I'm around the Sambonat Sue, I want to echo, and so I have stitched around her by using my applique helper, and now I am going to go into uh, my constant, and I'll just come out about a foot width, and echo, and you'll see I'm starting to hit over here, which means I won't get back to that area again. And up at the top, that's the last time around that one. So I can show you how we can still get over there. And I'll just sort of follow the side over here like that, and over. This is just a regular, like, quarter-inch echo. Kind of nice on this one because I can just go right out on the outside. There we go. So I can just go out on the outside like this and come over. Otherwise, I would have just followed a circle over very carefully. I wouldn't have stopped and started. It's just not... Um, time efficient to do that. And following another line is, uh, is easy to do and perfectly acceptable as long as you are careful and stay on the line. So I'm just finishing this right out inside the circle, not worrying about the sashing. There we go. For the fifth uh, design around the Sunbonnet Sue's, I've just stitched around her um, and now I want to do pattern meandering, but it needs to be, and I don't, I didn't usually mark this because I'm just using the circle, so I'm just kind of drawing these lines. I know that they're really hard to see in this, but this is kind of what you want. It's like spokes. You want them to come out so that um, when you're doing it, they're they're all centered toward the center of her. So let me show you what I mean. Now they'll come out here like this, but I'm using the circle out here as my guide, the edge of my circle, as if I were going into the middle each time. So just think that you're going into the middle each time, except that you won't be, because you'll be going to the edge of some bonnet Sioux. And again, they're, they're going to be a little wider out there and then narrower in here as if I were going into the center, as if I had those lines. So this is a fun one to do and an easy one to do. So I'll come in here and one more line out here and then I'll stop right there. And that completed all five of the designs around the Sunbonnet Sue's. Now in another episode, the next episode, we're going to do each bonnet differently. I'd like you to take a look at the quilt that I have behind me. It's another top that I bought and it has, I think the setting on this one is really cute and we'll be doing that in some future episodes too. So can't get enough of some bonnet Sue.